Hello, today we are talking about functions and equations. Functions are equations, uh, algebraic equations, in which we have an input and an output. Okay, and for every input, usually represented by x, but they could use different variables, there will be an output, usually represented by y. Okay, and then we're going to refresh ourselves on our lesson on graphing where we learned about ordered pairs and how when we're given an x value and a y value we're able to graph them on a coordinate plane. Okay, So we have a few problems that you might see on your homework. So for number one we have graph the function y equals one half times x plus one. Okay, And then we have a table here and we're going to fill this table in so we can basically choose values we want to test, okay? Because remember, for every value of the uh, input, there's going to be one output. So we can choose, basically, uh, we can put in any input we want, okay? So if you notice on the other examples, they have the, the zero. So let's test the zero. Remember, you could test any numbers you want, but the numbers you choose, it, may, it might affect you know, how easy it will be to graph, okay? And I'm going to look and I'm going to say, well, whatever I plug in as my x value, it's going to be multiplied by one half. So that means it's going to cut it in half, right? So I'm going to choose numbers that I know are easy to cut in half. Basically, I'm going to pick even numbers. So let's test for, how about two? Let's test for four and let's test for six. Notice, right, that I didn't pick any numbers on that x-axis, right? that aren't on the x-axis, right? If I chose 8, that starts to get problematic because my graph isn't large enough to contain that. Okay, so those are some things that you can look at to, when you're choosing what values for the input to pick. Well, let's solve this out, okay? Well, when I plug in 0 for x, it's going to be 1 half multiplied by 0. Well, 1 half times 0, any number times 0 is 0. So that is 0, and then we have to add 1. So 0 plus 1 is 1. So when we have the input of 0, we have an output of 1. All right, well, let's take 2. Let's do 1 half times 2. Well, 1 half of 2 is 1. So 1 plus 1. 1 plus 1 is 2. Okay, let's try 4. 1 half times by 4 is 2. So 2 plus 1 is 3. 6. Let's do 1 half times by 6. Well, that's 3 plus 1 is 4. And then we can remember, right, these could be made into ordered pairs, right? I could say, well, x is 0, y is 1. x is 2, y is 2. x is 4, y is 3. x is 6, y is 4. Okay? So we can make these ordered pairs, and when we have ordered pairs, we can graph those. So it would be when x is 0, so we don't move right or left any, y is 1. So we'd put a dot on the number, or on our coordinate plane. When x is 2, y is 2. So I count over 1, 2, and then up 1, 2. Right? Remember, x is, you go to the right or left, and then well, y, you go, to, you go up or down. Right? For 4, when x is 4, y is 3, so 1, 2, 3, and then when x is 6, so 6 is here, y is 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, and we should have a straight line here for this function. Okay, and you'll notice, right, a straight line. Like I said, for this problem, we should have a straight line. And that's what we call a linear function, okay? It's creating a line, all right? And so that's what we'd have to do for that problem, okay? So we filled in a table or we created a table and we tested some values for the input. We got the values of the output, okay? And then we ended up creating ordered pairs, okay? For number two, it says write an equation that to represent each function, and that's going to, that instruction is going to work for numbers two and three. Okay. Well, this one, instead of being given the function and plugging it in, this time we have to look at what's been plugged in and try to decipher a way 
to say what is our function. Well, when we're doing this, we see that y is the output, so I know automatically y is over here. Okay, y will equal something, okay? And then x, all right, and we need to figure out, where right, we, we know there's gonna be y, we know there's gonna be an x. We need to determine, okay, is anything happening to the x? Well, looking at this, well, if I plugged in zero for x, my output would be three. Hmm. So if I plugged in zero for x, my output would be three. So that's gonna give me a hint that I have to add three to this problem because, well, if this right here is gonna be zero, that three has to come from somewhere. So we're gonna add three to it, okay? But we'll notice that as we go, that wouldn't work for the next problem, right? Zero plus three is three. That works for the first one. But let's look here. One, right? So if x is one, one plus three is four. So that doesn't work. So what you're gonna notice is here, each time this moves up one, so this went up one, what did this go up? This went up two. When it goes from one to two, right? X goes up one, what happened to y? Y went up two. So if I notice that each time it's going up two like that, okay, let's try multiplying x by two, okay? So let's try it. All right, well, zero times two is zero. That's the identity property, or sorry, the zero property of multiplication. So zero plus three is three. So that works so far. How about one times two? plus three. Well, one times two is two, plus three is five. Okay, let's try two. So when x is two, two times two is four, plus three is seven, and it's going to work. That is our equation, okay? Now, let's go on to this next one. Hmm. So for number three, okay, let's try that again. So we know that y is going to equal something x, and we'll see. Are we going to add anything? Are we going to multiply x? Let's take a look. Okay, so, well, first, right off the bat, zero and zero. Y equals x. Well, if x is zero, y equals zero. So that's fine so far. That's going to give me the hint that I'm not adding or subtracting anything. Right here, we had when x equals zero, y equals three, okay? So that meant we had to add something to that x and whatever was multiplying it in order to get there, okay? But for this one, since that's zero and zero, I'm not gonna add or subtract anything. Let's go here. Well, two and four, so if I plug in two for x, I'm gonna get four out. Well, that doesn't work. Four does not equal two. So what would I need to do to that x? If x is two, what would I need to do to it to get it to four? Well, I'd have to multiply it by two. And let's see if that works, okay? So let's plug in two. So uh, two times two is four. Four times two is eight. Uh, six times two, right, is 12. Zero times two is zero, so it works. Okay, so those are a few examples from your homework tonight. Good luck. Let me know if you have any questions.